Got some past exam questions here on aromatic chemistry. So if you wanted to test yourself on these, have a go. Um, the link to the PDFs in the description for the video. So just download them, have a go, and then watch the video for the answers. So the first question, we've got a standard tablet of ibuprofen, 200 milligrams. That's going to have to go into grams, so that's 0 0.2 grams. The MR of ibuprofen, well, its molecular formula is C13H18O2. So that gives us an MR of 206. So the moles in the tablet is the mass, 0 0.2 over MR 206. And that gives us 9.7087 times 10 to the minus 4 as a calculated value, which is option B. Next question, the mechanism for the nitration of benzene, electrophilic substitution, so option D. Question three, so we're told that when an organic compound is heated with aqueous silver nitrate and ethanol cream solid forms, I'm just going to highlight aqueous there, so that's important. The cream solid is obviously silver bromide, so it's either that one or that one. Well, the um, bromobenzene doesn't react with water, whereas C does. So when it reacts with water, I'll just show you, um, we're going to get the Br substituting for an OH group, and we'll get HBr, which is essentially this thing here is H plus and Br minus, and it's that that reacts with the silver ions from the silver nitrate to form AgBr. Okay, so the answer was C. Question four now, so sort of slightly longer type question. Uh, explain the experimental evidence that led to the development of the updated model from Kekulé model of benzene. So I've put all four bits of evidence down, but you actually only needed to give two. There was two marks for the evidence and two marks for the bonding. So in terms of evidence, the carbon-carbon bond lengths were all the same in benzene, not alternating between the shorter CC double bond and the slightly longer CC single bond. You could have said that it undergoes substitution reactions and not addition reactions. You could have talked about the enthalpy change of hydrogenation, not hydration, being less exothermic than expected, or you could have talked about benzene generally being a stable molecule, it only reacts if catalysts are present, and I would always give at least one example. So if you're reacting benzene with chlorine, it needs an AlCl3 catalyst, or if you're reacting it with nitric acid, nitration reaction, it needs that sulfuric acid catalyst. Moving on to the bonding now, there's a couple of marks up for grabs here. So I've started the diagram that I would always draw to explain this. So we've got this um, hexagonal ring and I'm showing the P orbitals on all six of the carbon atoms. Remember there's an upper lobe and a lower lobe. And what they do is they start to overlap with each other and create this new region of space that the electrons can sort of whiz around in here. Because there's a lower lobe as well, we've also got um, a lower region of space formed um, and so therefore that will generate, let's just put this flattened hexagon back in, that's going to generate either a region of space above the plane of the hexagon or below. So this here is the delocalized ring of pi electrons. Now I would always advise drawing a diagram because it gives you something to talk about. If you, you don't have to, so if you wanted to just purely put it in words, you would need to say this. So the first statement you would make would be the p orbitals overlap to form pi bonds. So that's kind of what we've got here. And the pi electrons are delocalized. We'll have that in that diagram there. Part B now, a chemist investigates the chlorination of methyl benzene, finds that the methyl group has a 2 and 4 directing effect. So we've got to outline the mechanism for the formation of 4 chloromethyl benzene from methyl benzene and chlorine in the presence of that AlCl3 catalyst, and we've got to show how it acts as a catalyst. First part of the mechanism is the production of the electrophile, so that's AlCl3 plus chlorine goes to AlCl4 minus plus Cl plus. That's that electrophile. Then we bring the methyl benzene into play and the electrophile. And we want to 
draw a curly arrow from the pi electron cloud to the electrophile and that's going to generate an intermediate now remember we've got to form the four chloro product so the cl is going to go here so the partial electron cloud will be drawn like that and then we draw a curly arrow from the CH bond back in to reform the ring of pi electrons. So we get this. And the H comes off as an H plus. And then finally to show how the AlCl3 acts as a catalyst, we need to reform it basically. So AlCl4 minus plus that H plus goes to HCl and AlCl. Three. Part C, we've got to use the information in the table about the um, direct and effects of different groups to come up with the mono-substituted products from these two reactions. Okay, so we can see from the table that the CN group is three directin. So therefore the product would be this. It's mono-substitution, remember. So the CN group is going to put the Cl at position three, so there. You could also obviously draw it here. The NHCOCH3 group, you can just, there it is there, it's a two, four director. Now what you can't do is put two CLs on at position two and four because that would be di substitution. Remember, it's gotta be mono substitution. So NHCOCH3, so we could have a CL there, but we would also generate the four isomer which is that one there. The reactions of the C6H5N CH3 twice are similar to the reactions of phenol. Draw the organic product that's formed from the tri substitution. So if you remember your phenol reactions when that reacts with bromine you get 246 tribromorphenol so that's a specified reaction on this on the syllabus so obviously if this compound's reacting with um, chlorine we're just going to get the chlorines going at 246 as well so that's it there next part of the question explain why chlorine reacts much more readily with that molecule than with benzene so just a reminder what phenol does the pair of electrons on the oxygen of the OH group, they become delocalized and essentially increase the electron density of the pi electron cloud. And so it's able to polarize um, things like chlorine more easily, or you could say attract electrophiles more easily. So for the case of this molecule here, they've got an N, there's obviously a lone pair on that nitrogen. So the lone pair on the nitrogen of the NCH3 twice group delocalizes into the ring, just like the lone pair on the O of the OH group in phenol, that's going to increase the electron density of the ring or the pi electrons and therefore it's able to polarise chlorine more than benzene can. Next question, question five. There's no part A by the way, I just um, didn't use part A from the paper I got this question from. So if this is what we would call an unfamiliar mechanism. So obviously it's not on any specification this one, it's just thrown at you in the exam and you've got to deal with it. So we've got to add curly arrows to the diagram to show the two-step mechanism for this reaction. So what you need to do basically is look at what happened going from that to that. So you can see that this bond's broken and we've lost the positive charge on that nitrogen. The positive charge is now on that carbon there. So what's happened there is a pair of electrons from this CN bond have um, gone on to the N+, plus. it's broken the bond and it's left the positive charge on the carbon and got rid of the positive charge on the nitrogen. And then for step two, straightforward, you can see that we've gone from this here to that. There's no change in the nitrogen. So basically all that's happening is a pair of electrons is going to that carbon there. Part C, um, we've got to write the equation to show the formation of the electrophile that reacts with benzene in reaction one. So essentially we need this with a positive charge on it. It's formed from the reaction between the halogenoalkane and the FeBr3 in this case. So it would be CH3 twice 
CHBR plus the FEBR3 catalyst. That's going to generate the CH3 twice CH plus electrophile and an FEBR4 minus ion. Question six, state how four amino phenol can act as a base. Just testing your knowledge of what a base is. So a base is just a proton acceptor. So how can this do that? The lone pair on the nitrogen of the NH2 can accept a proton. Or H plus you could say. Next part, we've got to complete the mechanism of the reaction. Told what to use as the electrophile, include intermediate and products, and we're told that the NO2 substitutes for the Br on the ring. So obviously that's going to come off and the NO2 is going to go on. So electrophile, bring that in. Pair of electrons from the pi electron cloud to the end of the electrophile. That's going to generate the intermediate. So we'll get a partial electron cloud, positive charge. Show the bromine, it's not a hydrogen in this case, often is in other mechanisms, but it's a bromine in this case. Nothing happens at the bottom there. So that's the intermediate. And then we need to bring a curly arrow to lose that Br. So we get the NO2 there, the OH there, and we're going to get a Br plus ion. Next part of the question, we've got this flow chart. So the first thing we'll do is identify the reagent in reaction one. So what's changed here, that's just here, NH2 has changed to NH3 plus Cl minus. So it's obviously HCl. Next part, we've got to name the product of reaction two. So this thing here. So we know that this part is called four amino phenol. So we've got to be careful with our numbering here. The fact that it says four amino means that that's carbon number four. That's obviously carbon number one. So that means this is carbon number three and this is carbon number five. So this is called 3,5-dibromo-4-amino-phenol. Next part, we've got to write the equation for reaction two. So you can see going from here to here, we've substituted a hydrogen for a bromine and that's happened twice. Now, to make that happen, you need to react it with two moles of Br2, and we're going to get two moles of HBr. So there's that equation there. And finally, we've got to draw the structure of the organic compound formed by reaction three. So the sodium can react with the OH group, and it will create the O minus Na plus group. So NH2 up there. So O minus... Na plus would be the organic product of that reaction.